Pesticides are chemicals used to control pests in crops, livestock and in homes. Despite their usefulness, pesticides pose potential risks to the health of human beings and their environment. This risk is increased by improper practices through which pesticides are handled, especially by smallholder farmers. The whole community is concerned. Uh, it's not only the farmers, but even people working on, or walking on the street, because as soon as the environment is, uh, is, uh, is affected, then everybody is affected. Uh, teaching people, uh, sharing information on pesticide use and uh, the, 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 the effects of pesticides on the environment uh, and, the, and the health of the people who are using pesticides. Health facilities whom we are working with, uh, we go in and check on how many people have been uh, affected uh, by poison, I mean poisoning cases, you might say. Uh, and then we do analyze uh, the extent at which uh, uh, the, the, the pesticides are actually affecting people. To address these potential risks, UNACO started implementing the second phase of the Pesticide Use, Health and Environment PHE project in Palisa and Wakiso districts. In October 2013, the project was launched and introduced to the National Steering Committee, District Pesticide Committees, and the political leadership at district and sub-county levels. This phase really came up as, um, as we were winding up the first phase. Of course, there are a number of things we had piloted, which we thought would follow up to see if we could be able to mainstream them, but also carry on with raising awareness in the community but also bring more stakeholders on the team. VHTs, that is the village health team members, help with their, um, their health education in the community, but also the public health premier. The goal of this project was to improve the lives of Ugandans by promoting practices that reduce pesticide exposure to humans and their environment. To achieve this goal, the project had specific objectives of 1 building capacity of relevant local stakeholders, two, generating and facilitating use of new knowledge, and three, strengthening UNACO as an institution. With the second phase, we've really been able to do a number of activities, with the major ones being under capacity building, where we've had a number of trainings, training the six different categories, that is the smallholder farmers, the agro input dealers, extension workers, the healthcare workers. The project collected baseline data through questionnaire interviews and focus group discussions with smallholder farmers, agricultural extension workers, pesticide dealers, healthcare workers, village health team members, and public health spray men from Palisa and Wakiso district. Thereafter, the project trained these different primary stakeholders. More than 300 farmers were trained for 16 days on introduction to pesticides, pesticides and human safety, pesticides and environmental safety, pesticide application equipment, integrated pest management, and pesticide knowledge sharing. 236 VHT members were also trained on pesticide toxicity and safety precautions, first aid for a pesticide poisoning victim, integrated vector management, and health education skills. 110 health workers were trained on pesticide classification, pesticide poisoning diagnosis, treatment and registration, first aid and health education skills. If public health spray men were trained on pesticide toxicity and safety precautions, integrated vector management, and indoor residual spraying. 72 agro-input dealers were trained for 10 days on introduction to pesticides, pesticides and human safety, pesticides and environmental safety, pesticide application equipment, institutional and legal framework of pesticides in Uganda. 84 agriculture extension workers were trained for 12 days on the same topics as farmers and agro-dealers. 40 employees of 14 flower farmers were trained on pesticide classification, safety precautions, first aid, 
diagnosis, management and reporting of pesticide poisoning and integrated pest management. It was very important that this group is taken through precautions that they can take in order to work with pesticides. First of all, because they cannot avoid working with pesticides. It's something that is used almost on a daily basis on the flower farm. So people need to understand how to work with them safely. The mentioned trainings were conducted in collaboration with technical personnel from Palisa and Wakiso District local governments, Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Ministry of Health, Makerere University, UNADA, CropLife Uganda, Balton, Gold Seed Limited, ISIPE, Uganda Flower Exporters Association, Wakiso and Palisa District Farmers Association. Different initiatives were undertaken to reach out to wider masses. These included 43 radio talk shows on CBS, Namirembe, ISA and Continental FM, four district conferences, four joint annual scientific health conferences in collaboration with Makerere University, over 90 drama shows in the community, and over 200 village sensitization meetings spearheaded by trained VHTs. The project made regular physical follow-up visits, phone calls and weekly SMS in four languages to over 500 recipients. Under its second objective, the project delivered different outputs aimed at facilitating use of knowledge, materials and strategies generated by the project. In this endeavor, the project undertook efforts to establish a national poison information center by training 17 technical personnel from Mulago Hospital, Directorate of Government Analytical Laboratories DGAL, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Health, and UNACO. Most of the poisons uh, which we get are pesticide poisons. Uh, and this poisoning can either be acute or chronic. So with acute, normally where it is intentional poisoning, uh, somebody wants to poison someone and kill them. But also there are those who are exposed uh, chronically. One accumulates levels of poisons over time without noticing it. And this could be because of the nature of the work they are doing. Uh, this is the farmers as they are using them in their gardens, as they are spraying. Uh, as they do maybe post-harvest handling, but also those who work in areas, like in industries, uh, where they work with the chemicals. So they may inhale these chemicals, uh, or uh, they may eat them in the foods, and so on. The recent data that we've been collecting from Wakiso and Palisa Health Facilities, which after training the healthcare workers, we've realized they also that the cases are really there. And majority of the cases are getting accidentally poisoned. Uh, in the data that I was analyzing, uh, majority, I think 63%, were taking these pesticides orally. The roots of they were ingesting it. This could be maybe by taking raw tomatoes that are not washed, or maybe fruits that are not washed. And usually, like the practice in farmers is they tie everything in the same basket, let me say in the cavera. Put the pesticides there, then the fruits, on coming back after the garden. So maybe accidentally they get mixed up and on reaching home they don't wash properly and then they eat and then even some intentionally take it some ingest it maybe through you know poor storage like the food is stored together with the pesticides in the same room so cross-contamination occurs and before you know it you're taking food that is pesticide poisoned the project equipped the information center at Digal with toll-free telephone a computer set and subscription to a toxicology database the project further facilitated two technical staff members from DIGAL to a study tour of the Tanzania National Poison Information Center. 
We signed a memorandum of understanding, and this memorandum of understanding was for us to come together and see how we can assist our country and also the sector we wish uh, to serve. And uh, because of this partnership, or MOU, uh, UNACO helped first to, 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 to fund a benchmarking trip of our toxicologists or analysts to Dar es Salaam to go and see what a poison information center is. And because this was one of the outputs uh, of the MOU, was capacitate uh, the GAL or government and collaboratory in setting up a national poison information center. The project revised and developed different information, education and communication materials in form of training handbooks, flip charts, posters, fact sheets, pamphlets, flyers, and a training video. Six training handbooks were reviewed, approved, and adopted by the Agricultural Chemicals Board and a Crop Protection Department in the Ministry of Agriculture. A training handbook for school children was also reviewed by the Ministry of Education and Sports. The project conducted four studies including trend of pesticide poisoning, pesticide residues in tomatoes, adoption of integrated pest management, and capacity of trained and untrained health workers to manage pesticide poisoning. Most of these studies have been published in international journals. In conducting these studies, the project supported university students from Denmark and Uganda to gain research and field experience. The project engaged over 25 lecturers from different universities such as Makerere University, Gulu University, Mbarara University, Busitema University, Kampala International University, Islamic University in Uganda, Mulago and Nsambia Hospital Medical Schools on possible inclusion of pesticide poisoning prevention and management in their teaching curricula. Over 300 students from some of the above universities were also sensitized. It has greatly added to what we set out to do in our curriculum on agriculture training. And more important is that it has targeted our as students who are, whom we are training as change agents. So the message will definitely get out to the communities given that the students are interacting on a daily basis with the community members. So this training on pesticide use and handling has come at a point when it is timely, it is really needed because this is the time when many farmers out there are using a lot of chemicals and yet they are not adequately empowered to know which chemical to use, when to use, how to use, and also how to dispose the, the containers. Under its third objective, the project was represented in international events such as the Precision Spraying Course in Denmark, Advances in Handheld Spray Equipment Conference in Spain, Danida Fellowship Program, and other public health events in Africa. Through this project, UNACO has also been able to sign memoranda of understanding with over six partners including UFAIR, Goldseed, Agnisba, Opwe, ESAF Uganda and Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute. We also agreed uh, within the MOU uh, to undertake trainings of, our, um, of the different uh, um, members of our staff that handle um, pesticides that handle fertilizers, anything that is related uh, with um, flower growing. And these ones, uh, we are looking at training um, sprayers, we are looking at training um, clinical officers or women um, employees when they are sick. Uh, we are also looking at training women, empowering women to understand um, uh, areas of protection. The project has supported an annual retreat of UNACO staff, volunteers and national executive committee members for the last three years, besides producing a quarterly newsletter to update the stakeholders on project progress. The planning, implementation and monitoring of all the outputs delivered by this project were overseen by the two district pesticide committees and a national steering committee which sat twice a year. The PHE project has had profound outcome among the respective stakeholders. This is Galiwango Cholobi. 
one of the primary stakeholder beneficiary farmers. He shares the changes experienced after participation in the PHE project. Yunako mkuji ingida na jisi sinka na kugombola nga tuitidwa chiamani wa fuwe gombola nga jifunye na ajagala janjule ili haba limi vya haba mgombola yemendi. Mutufu wetu agenda haba kulu haba tuletele omusomu gunu tuwa gusimi ilani tugukiriza au kugombola wena lavida yunako kufolo kakati yemiaka jiri muena nga ankola gana na yunako. Kaso kana tufuna msomo, yuna konge tuwa njulida, ente kateka yona, nga wwe genda ukuba. Ogo kubidi, netusoma kukule nunji, yoku laba uwa uugule dagara, uwa fanana. Uruwa nyo luo kumanya o, tuwa viranga, tuliba kugu mkumanya, chichi, echi nituwa luo kugule dagara ili. Umala kulaba chiruade, na umanye dagara ili gendo chiko lako, na ugende ili omukugu, omutendeke, mkutunde dagara ili, guba ita agrodira. Era, tuwali tutambuli ya wamu na bonga yunako ya tusomesa, ngatipo ya tusomesa ni bagulodira. Ni tumanya bagulodira za batufu, ni tumanya na abafere, kwa babela. Lulinga sinafuna kumisomoja yunako, nalimi maraga fuida. Ngedagala buwe nsanga buwe ndigula, buwe ndigula, buwe ndisanga kumutembe yindigula, atene ndireta, buwe maro kulitu usanditeka munyumba, nyizo kuliteka wantu wana buwe nsanze, Obandi tade wen teleka sukali no munyo na majani nga tumalaga teka. Kwa ganga tutuchi tuwa la nge chikulu. Nwaduwa njimara yu na kwa kutuso meso vuru nji. Katikubyaro. Tulina ke nchi, e, nchi koza feza. Bali miyaba asoma. Nga tuya amba kuwa avo. Abata asoma kufuso vuru kufuna kumagezi. Fegetuwa afuna. Kukuyambi vuru kufuwa mbele ili fegetuwa alimu. Nga tutuna wa kutuso meso vuru. Necho kubidi. Tufunye ku conferences zenja ulo gamba nge palisa nzo mkubalimi. Burhan Kamiuka is an agro dealer based in Wakiso district. He was among the selected agro dealers trained by the PHE project. Yedagara. Yedagara tuli ya ulamu ebika. 